It's good to be bad, except when it isn't. We've all done a Renegade Mass Effect playthrough or a Murder Everybody run of Oblivion, but these moments allow the players to be so evil, so selfish, and so unrepentantly loathsome that you'd have to be some sort of sociopath to ever choose them. The history of RPGs powered by Summoner's War. If you made these moral choices in RPGs, you are a monster who should be put in prison for it. Number four, maintaining the genophage, Mass Effect 3. When you first meet Rex in Mass Effect 1, you learn about the Krogan genophage. Long story short, the Salarians were scared of having to deal with a universe full of warlike Krogans, so they rendered them all infertile. In Mass Effect 3, you finally have a chance to undo, uh, oh, uh, spoilers by the way? You finally have a chance to undo the genophage and let the Krogans make adorable little headbutting babies. <laughs> If you do choose to cure the genophage, which is what someone with a functioning moral compass might do, then Morden redeems himself in a tear-jerking blaze of sacrificial glory. The Krogans are saved, and Rex is happier than he's ever been. If you choose not to cure the genophage, then you literally have to shoot Morden, one of the most likable characters in the entire franchise, in the goddamn back. He'll crawl on his hands and knees, desperate to reverse the genophage he initially created, but he'll die before he can, because you shot him in the back. And if that weren't enough, Rex finds out what you did and comes looking for revenge. And then you kill him, too! Rex, the best character in the entire franchise! Somehow, there are people who actually chose to do this. They should not be allowed to live in a civilized society. Number 3. Aging the Little Girl. Fable 2. Late in Fable 2, a charming asshole named Reaver asks you to return an item called the Dark Seal to its original owners. Once you do, you meet a young, frightened girl named Elizabeth and three shadow spirits who explain that someone will have to use the Dark Seal to give up their youth so that Reaver can remain young and sexy forever. Again, Reaver is an asshole. It's at this point that you have a choice. You can either hold onto the seal yourself and immediately age your character to like 30 years, or you can give it to Elizabeth and deprive her of her youth. Considering you know nothing about Elizabeth other than the fact that she and her friends accidentally read from a cursed book, and given that she constantly mentions how scared she is and how badly she wants to go home, you'd have to be a real piece of shit to offload the Dark Seal onto her just because you're scared of getting some gray hairs. What? What's happened to me? No! Even when I did an evil playthrough of Fable 2, I couldn't bear to give Elizabeth the Dark Seal because you had to hand it to her. She'll take it confusedly and continue to panic, utterly ignorant of the fate that's about to befall her. So I just took the damn thing back and got ugly. Small price to pay for not being a huge asshole. Number two, killing Mission Veo in Knights of the Old Republic. Mission Veo and her Wookiee friend Zalbar are two of the first NPCs you meet in Knights of the Old Republic. They're fun, they're kind-hearted, and Zalbar has an unbreakable life debt to Mission. That's kind of weird. If you're a monster, you can break that debt in a pretty damn gruesome way. Long story short, throughout the course of the game, you will save Zalbar's life and he'll become life debted to you as well. This isn't a big deal for most of the game, as you, Mission, and Zalbar are pretty much on the same page about most things. But near the end of the game, you can go hard into the dark side, like full on Sith. But Mission, because she's a sweetheart, will beg you to turn away from the dark. She knows there's good in you. If you want, you can prove her hilariously wrong by calling in your life debt with Zalbar and forcing him to kill Mission Veo, his best friend. Considering how nice Mission is, and how sweet her relationship with Zalbar is, you'd have to be a real-life Sith to even consider this a reasonable thing to do. You wouldn't make Chewie kill Han, would you? Number 1, Fallout 2, Selling Your Spouse Into Slavery In Fallout 2, you can have sex with either the son or daughter of a slaughterhouse owner named Grisham. If you do, Grisham will burst into your room post-coitus and demand that you marry his kid on pain of death. It gets weird. When you do, you are then burdened with your spouse. And I don't mean burdened, like her, her, marriage is a burden. I mean burdened, like your spouse has basically no skills at all. They can never level up. They can't hold many items. They can't take care of themselves in a fight. Pretty much useless. They also take up a companion slot that could otherwise be occupied by someone who actually knows what they're doing, which means they make the game actively harder. There are only three ways to get rid of your spouse. In ascending levels of horrificness, the first one is divorce. You can just go to New Reno, pay some booze, and become separated. If you don't know about this option though, or are too lazy, you can go with option number two, getting your spouse killed. This is obviously dark and sad, but nowhere near as sad as option three, which is to prostitute your spouse out to anyone who will pay you before ultimately selling them off into slavery. The Fallout series may dabble in dark comedy, but this blows right past mean-spirited humor into full-on dystopian horror. We're always looking for more horrible things, so let us know in the comments below if we've missed any. Tune in next time for more History of RPGs.